collagen. What's the big deal? This is Dr. Jeetan Bendo for Physician Perspectives. So collagen is a protein that occurs in almost all animal tissues. It constitutes about 25% of all human proteins. And it refers to a family of collagen proteins which differ in characteristic, location, molecular and spatial structure. Collagen plays an important role in the healing process, tissue growth, regeneration and also participates in the processes of cell adhesion, growth and differentiation. And these collagen functions take place mainly due to the specific structure of its fibers. This spatial structure, called as a superhelix, provides the beneficial properties of collagen, especially very high mechanical strength. A basic structural unit of collagen is tropocollagen alpha helix left-handed molecule composed of three polypeptides spirally wound chains. The amino acid composition and the amount in polypeptide chains differ between different types of collagen. Now the collagen molecule does not only consist of helical fragments, the non-helical domains are also characteristic of some types of collagen. There are 29 types of collagen and the collagen protein family classification is based on the differences in structure, location and properties of individual types. There are two main collagen groups which are fibrillar collagen and non-fibrillar. Fibrillar collagen forms fibrils naturally consisting about 90% of all collagen present in the human body. Non-fibrillar collagen, on the other hand, is much more differential in terms of structure, location and properties. Now, although it amounts only to 10% of all collagen in the human body, it is a vital part of many organs. So here are the fibrillar and the non-fibrillar collagens. So we have 29 types of collagens and you can see that they are spread all over the body in very important locations. The collagen protein family is encoded by 44 genes. That's a large number. It has been shown that collagen synthesis and degradation increase under the influence of short-term and long-term exercise. So exercise plays a very important role in the formation and the management and maintenance of collagen. So here's a graphical representation of tropocollagen. One has to remember that collagen has got distinctly three amino acids that are in abundance. They are proline, hydroxyproline and glycine. Now, if we look at the collagen content of different parts of the body of animals, arteries have about 10 to 25 percent, cartilage 50 to 70 percent, skin 50 to 70 percent, demineralized bone 80 to 90 percent, lungs 10 percent, liver 4 percent, and tendons 80 to 90 percent. So you can only imagine how important collagen is. Why do we need collagen? All these different tissue have collagen, so we certainly, certainly need collagen in abundance. Now, it also has, of course, antioxidant, anti-aging, anti-tumor, and several other beneficial uh, you know, effects in the body. And that is why collagen is very central to our being. Again, why do we need collagen? Because as we age, the collagen content in our tissue drops. So here is a representation of the drop in collagen in skin as we age. Now it really depends on how much collagen one has in the, begin in the, in, in the beginning for instance and how one maintains that collagen by regular intake of amino acids that are required for the making of collagen. Of course the next question is how much collagen should we consume per day? To answer this question let me look at some of the published papers on collagen intake for various challenges. So if you look at this paper, 
decreasing activity related joint pain in athletes. They consumed 10 grams of hydrolyzed collagen per day for 24 weeks in about 147 participants. And what they found out is that athletes consuming collagen hydrolysates, that's collagen supplements, can reduce parameters such as pain that have a negative impact on athletic performance. So this is 10 grams. This study looked into improving functional ankle properties in athletes with chronic ankle instability. Participants had 5 grams of collagen for 6 months and they report improvement in ankle stability function and a significant decline in the number of ankle joint injuries. This study was the improvement of joint health that will lead to maintaining an active lifestyle throughout aging. They used 8 grams of collagen peptides orally for 6 months and of course they report that the nutraceutical helped maintain the quality of life during aging. This paper published in 2019 looked at the acceleration of recovery of muscle function and attenuation of muscle soreness following strenuous physical exercise. The participants had 20 grams of hydrolyzed collagen per day for 9 days, 7 days prior to exercise and 2 days after and they did have a performance improvement after having collagen. Here is an interesting study published in 2020 where they looked at improving brain structure and cognitive language ability. So the participants were between 49 and 63 years old and they had 5 grams of collagen for 4 weeks once a day of course and they report that daily ingestion of collagen changed brain structure and improved language cognitive function. This study looked at improvements in predictors of atherosclerosis. Participants had 16 grams of collagen two in two divided doses of course for six months and the report that the collagen tripeptide contributes to the prevention and the treatment of atherosclerosis in healthy humans. This study looked at increasing bone mineral density in postmenopausal women where they had 5 grams of collagen peptides for 12 months. Of course, they improve their bone markers. So, how much collagen should we consume per day is an open ended question. Just with these few papers that I have uh, you know, presented over here, there are plenty more. There's a variation of 2.5 to 20 grams of uh, collagen per day. So it really depends on what condition you're looking at. So if you look at the sources of collagen as supplements, the main sources are avian, porcine, bovine or aquatic. There are no vegan or vegetarian sources yet. You get collagen builders, but they don't really have the collagen source or the amino acid sources that are required for the synthesis of collagen in the body. So that can be overcome, of course, by making synthetic collagen or by using recombinant technology and which will help plants make collagen for us. This is a recently published paper on human collagen produced in plants using recombinant technology. So it's a question of time. Thank you.